What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog back for another video. And this video will be my long-awaited second full first round mock draft. Decided to do it after the season officially ended and the Browns were on the clock. Well, they're not on the clock. So, uh, Sashi Brown, you know, Deep Podesta, you know, all you clowns in that front office, you know, the spotlight's on you now. You know, now you got all this time to make the right choice at number one. Better not mess this up. But, um, speaking of my mock draft, first round pick goes to the Cleveland Browns. And with that first round pick, I, first overall pick, I have the Browns selecting Miles Garrett. If the Browns do not pick Garrett number one, I'll be highly upset. I won't be, you know, because, I mean, how mad I am will be will depend on who we would draft. If we draft Jonathan Allen, I'll be fine with that. If we draft a quarterback, you know, I'll be like, oh, wait, so we passed up on a talent like Garrett to get a quarterback. Blech. Especially with these rumors swirling that we're going after Jimmy Garoppolo. Hmm. Oh, man. But we better go Garrett. Uh, number two, I have the San Francisco 49ers with their new head coach, Kyle Shanahan, selecting Deshaun Kaiser. Uh, number three, I have the Chicago Bears selecting Deshaun Watson. Again, those picks we already knew. What happened? Oh. Something on my phone. Never mind. Disregard that. <laughs> um, coming in at number four, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Dalvin Cook. Running back out of Florida State. Dalvin can legit go anywhere from number four to like late first round. He's a very good running back. And I feel like Jacksonville would love to use him. I mean, you got TJ Yeldon. You got Ivory. Two not so good running backs. They need a guy who can be a workhorse in the backfield with Blake Bortles at quarterback. And I feel like Dalvin Cook can be just that kind of guy. He can be just like Maurice Jones Drew or Fred Taylor. Definitely. He's a very good bell cow running back. Coming in at number five is the Tennessee Titans via the LA Rams. I have them selecting Mike Williams. Coming in at number six, the New York Jets select Mitch Trubisky, quarterback out of North Carolina. This was my pick in my previous first round mock draft. Coming in at number seven, I have the LA Chargers. God, that sounds weird to say. Selecting Malik Hooker, safety slash corner out of Ohio State. I feel like they could use a guy that could be the next Eric Weddle. I want the Browns to take Hooker. But I feel like he won't fall to us at 12. If we keep 12, we'll see what the Browns do with that. But, uh, man, Malik Hooker, that, that Chargers defense. Quickly, that defense is getting good. Watch out. If healthy, the Chargers could be a dark horse. Playing in their new soccer stadium. Yeah, I think that may be the world's, the NFL's smallest stadium. Even the Browns, at a quarter of attendance, could have a higher attendance than that place. <laughs> Bruh. I mean, we had more Browns fans average, you know, attending... We had more Browns fans attending games this year than the Chargers will have seats for their team next year. Bruh, you're playing in a soccer stadium. You're sharing a stadium with the LA Galaxy. Bruh. But enough talking about soccer. All right, moving on. Uh, number eight, I have the Panthers selecting Reuben Foster, linebacker out of Alabama. You know, a guy to pair up next to Luke Keekley. Coming in at number nine, I have the Bengals selecting Solomon Thomas out of Stanford. Another dynamic pass rusher for that defense. Coming in at number ten, I have the Buffalo Bills selecting Jonathan Allen out of Alabama. Another Awesome pass rusher for another good defense that I believe will have a new defensive coordinator. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they will. No, man. What am I saying? Of course they will. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I remember when, you know, uh, Buffalo, they have a defense, man. They're developing something big down there. Of course, when you got Tom Brady down there, you need a pass rush. 
you gotta come, you gotta try and get at the Tom Brady, you know, if he doesn't retire, which I doubt he will. He ain't retiring. Hell no. He's gonna wanna. I mean, why would you wanna pass up the opportunity to beat up on that division, bruh? I mean, he's almost guaranteed what, you know, six wins a year, <laughs> bruh. You know, of course. Unless, like, you know, one of the other three teams gets a lucky shot in, like, at the end of the year when the game doesn't matter. Or, you know, if Brady gets suspended or hurt or something. But, of course, you know, it takes a suspension but from Brady, a Brady suspension or, you know, week 17 for the AFC East to beat the Patriots. It doesn't happen too often. But, yeah, you need a guy to get after Brady, you know, disrupt him a little bit. And Jonathan Allen's that kind of guy. He's right up there with Miles Garrett for best players in this draft. And I have him going number 10 in my draft. <sighs> I'm going to get hate for that. I know that. Coming in at number 11, I have the Saints selecting uh, Jamal Adams out of LSU. Obviously, their secondary is garbage. They need to fix it fast. Because their offense isn't going to be able to support them forever. They need to fix that defense big time. It hasn't been that good since Greg Williams left. Bruh. Garbage. Coming in at number 12, I have the Cleveland Browns selecting Marshawn Lattimore, corner out of Ohio State. We don't usually draft Ohio State corners, although today we actually picked up Tyvis Powell off of waivers. And he's a very good safety. Marshawn Lattimore, you know, he's got range, he's got the height, he's got great awareness, great skills around the ball, great coverage skills. I, I would love if we got him. It's especially if Malik Cooker does not fall to us. Coming in at number 13, I have the Cardinals selecting John Ross. You know, they love receivers named John. <laughs> but, I mean, Fitzgerald's coming back, add another weapon for that offense. We'll see about Carson Palmer. My guess is he's coming back as well. You know, and then you got David Johnson in the backfield. Pretty good offense right there. Let's see if they can contend next year, you know. Down year for the Cards. Let's see what they can do next year. Coming in at 14, you got the Philadelphia Eagles, although this will have an asterisk next to it because they're going to be in a coin toss with the Colts for the number 14 and 15 pick. But for right now, I have them at 14, and I have them selecting Leonard Fournette out of LSU, uh, looking at looking at that division, the other three teams have a dynamic rushing attack. You know, I mean, of course the Redskins have Matt Jones. Well, I'll admit I had no idea who that dude was at the beginning of the year. And of course the Cowboys got Zeke, and the uh, Giants got Shane Vereen and Jennings. So. The Eagles need a better running back than Ryan Matthews. And Darren Sproles, his time's running out. He's retiring after this year. Kenyon Barner's decent. Wendell Smallwood, bruh. Really, you're not going to be able to rely on him all the time. You need a big workhorse bell cow running back like uh, Leonard Fournette. You know, he can really tear it in, take it to defenses. Very hard to bring down an open field. He's an amazing running back when he's healthy. He does have a bit of a injury problem, though. I think it's with his knee. I'm not sure. But uh, coming in at number 15, again, asterisk, I have the Indianapolis Colts selecting Cam Robinson. Tackle out of Alabama. Oh, my God, they're in the, the Colts are selecting offensive line. It's a miracle. They need it. Andrew Luck is getting murdered in that backfield. They need uh protection for him. They need insurance for luck. And I think Cam Robinson would be the perfect guy for that young offensive line. They got a good center. You know, they got a few other good pieces, but they need more. You know. One guy on the offensive line is not going to help make your offensive line amazing. Just ask the Browns. Joe Thomas is the GOAT of left tackles. One of the GOATs. You know, there's, a, there's quite a few of them out there. But he's one of the best. You know, an offensive line is garbage. Ever since we let Mac and Schwartz go, it's been bleh. Quarterbacks have been getting massacred since 1999. <laughs> but uh, moving on, Baltimore selects 
Quincy Wilson at 16 out of Florida. Another great corner. You know, add to that secondary. 17, The I have the Redskins selecting O.J. Howard, tight end out of Alabama, to put next to Jordan Reed. At 18, I have the Titans selecting tackle Charlton out of Michigan. A guy you can put next to uh, Casey in the front seven to harass quarterbacks. Especially when you got the Colts who don't like to draft offensive linemen. So, you know, they're leaving Luck like a sitting duck. Because they don't give up. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I don't swear in my video. No, 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 no. But, uh, yeah, Taco Charlton going to Tennessee. At 19, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting David Njoku, tight end out of Miami, Florida. At 20, I have the Broncos selecting Garrett Bowles, offensive lineman, or I think he's a guard out of Utah. They need offensive help, offensive line help, especially when you got a new quarterback. Most likely, I don't know who it'll be, Lynch or Simeon. Most likely, it could be Lynch. And you need some guys to keep him on his feet, you know? Coming in at number 21, I have the Detroit Lions going with Joe Burrow Peppers. Because why the heck not? I believe Detroit could use a guy like Peppers. You know, he's got a good, you know, football mentality. He loves football. You know, I saw the dude play in person in high school. He came to Ohio to play uh, Cleveland High School. Didn't do too bad. I think he got hurt in the game, but yeah, he didn't. He, he looked like a boss out there. He's a great football player. Depends on where they would put him, though. Linebacker, corner, safety. I don't know. But, yeah, I have the Lions picking him. At 22, I have the Dolphins selecting Forrest Lamp, offensive lineman out of Western Kentucky. You know, add him to the Unicorns, to that squad of uh, offense, offensive linemen, mainly for depth. Oh, I mean, he could start. Who knows where he'll start, though. But, uh... You know, he could be a good second stringer if he doesn't start already. At 23, I have the New York Giants selecting Tredavious White out of LSU. Might be a little high for him, but the Giants need some secondary help. I mean, you got Eli Apple, Janoris Jenkins. I think adding Tredavious White to that would be amazing, and especially when you got Landon Collins lurking in the uh, defensive backfield. In the you know mid in, at center field in the safety position, you got a guy who can just you know cover you up top. That's what you guys need, and the Giants would love to have Tre'Davious White. Although that might be a little high for him, though. Some people are gonna say, "Oh, it's too high for him." You know, honestly, he's a first, he's honestly a first or second round pick, so he's right around his range. Coming in at number twenty four, I have the Raiders selecting Ryan Ramzik out of Wisconsin. I mean, with what happened in the playoffs, you know, guys get hurt. You need guys, capable backups. Austin Howard is a pretty good backup, but, you know, bruh. I mean, Ryan Ramsick could be a great tackle. You know, he's young. He's got great feet, great footwork. You know, he's a good, good. I think he's, a, he's an offensive tackle, isn't he? Yeah. If we drafted him, he'd definitely be a good backup for Joe Thomas. I mean, of course, that'd be kind of funny because he's from Wisconsin, too. <laughs> You know, if he goes fishing during the draft, watch out because that's, you know, that's good. Because that's what Joe Thomas did. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. Coming at number 25, why is that going to make him good? I don't know. It's just weird because he went fishing and I don't know. I don't know why I honestly said that, but Ryan Ramzik is a very, very good tackle. You know, he's, he's the kind of guy you'd want to have backing up your – Stud tackle or your, you know, even a, even guards, you know. Coming in at number 25, I have the Houston Texans selecting Jared Davis out of Florida. Linebacker. You know, they could use another good linebacker, you know. Just, I mean, bro. They, their defense was pretty dang good, even without J.J. Watt. You know, get another linebacker that you could, you know, send in there. In case if you know someone gets hurt, I don't know. A lot of these picks probably make no sense at all. I mean, this is a mock draft after all. It will change. Don't worry, it will change. 
You know, don't get your underwear in a bunch. <laughs> ah, he's not going to go there. I know that. It's going to change. It's only February, dude. Bruh. I mean, the combine hasn't happened yet. Free agency hasn't happened yet. Pro days definitely haven't happened yet. That's when it's going to get real interesting, you know, during free agency and the pro days. That's when that's when you're really going to start looking for the mock drafts. Uh, coming at number 26, I have the Seattle Seahawks selecting Carl Lawson out of Auburn. Another great guy to put in the front seven to aid the Legion of Boom. You know, a great pass rusher. Gets off the ball amazingly well. He would just be a pleasant sight over there in Seattle. Especially with Michael Bennett there. And I think Cliff Averill? You know, and of course he got a type of Ruben too. Oh, that'd be pretty good down there. Coming in at number 27, I have the Kansas City Chiefs selecting Charles Harris out of Missouri. I think he's like a linebacker. Another great stud of a linebacker. You know, this dude would just bolster the Kansas City defense. Justin Houston, Charles Harris on opposite sides. You know, watch out. I think that would be a great pick for Kansas City. Coming in at number 28, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Sidney Jones out of Washington. Their corners got beat quite a few times. You know, their, their defense has overall been garbage at times as well. Failing to come up clutch in big situations like the Green Bay game, most definitely, you know. But, uh, yeah, Sidney Jones is a great corner, you know. And I think he'd look really good in, uh, you know, playing in Jerry World. You know, Mo Claiborne, Barry Church, you know, those guys down there. Put Sidney Jones in there, and I think he'd be pretty good. Low key. Coming in at number 29, I have the Green Bay Packers selecting Tack McKinley out of UCLA. Another guy who can, you know, generate an amazing pass rush, get after the quarterback, stuff, you know, stop the run. I think, you know, he'd be a great pick for Green Bay, definitely. Coming in at number 30, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Hassan Reddick, linebacker out of Temple. Um, it's unclear if they're going to keep Lawrence Timmons, but I believe if he does leave, they're going to need a backup for him. Or if, you know, I mean, they could also use someone from in-house or free agency. But we'll see. You know, Hassan Reddick's a very good linebacker. I've seen a little tape on him, you know. He's that kind of guy that you'd love to have on your team. Gets after the quarterback, generates pass rush. You know, he's quick off the ball. He can also chase tight ends, you know. He can cover something that you don't really see too many, too much uh, nowadays from linebackers. They can actually cover like a Jamie Collins, you know. I think he'd fit pretty well in Pittsburgh next to Ryan Shazier. And then 31st, I have Atlanta selecting Ryan Anderson, linebacker out of Alabama. You know, after what I saw last night, you know, they could use some good linebackers. You know, and they got some decent ones right now. Just add some more depth. So then, you know, when if you guys are getting gas, you can send in another capable linebacker to just keep up the pressure. Because they had the game won last night, but their defense was getting gassed. And their offense failed to support them. They couldn't move the ball. I mean, passing the ball on third and one and getting sacked on third and 11 when all you needed was a field goal to pretty much uh, put it almost out of reach. That's all they needed. Man, nope. Let the Patriots come back and win. And speaking of the Patriots, at 32, I have the Patriot Rats, the Cheatriots, the Cheaters, Hashtag deflate gate, you know, the goats, whatever you want to call them nowadays. The five time, five time, five time, five time, five time Super Bowl champs. I have the Patriots selecting Montrevious Adams, defensive lineman out of Auburn. This guy has the potential to be the next Vince Wilfork. You know, they need a guy who can definitely stuff the run up the middle. You know, of course they lost Jamie Collins, so you know, they don't they don't have that guy that can Leap over offensive linemen, although you don't really need that. But they need a guy who can stuff the run. You know, I don't know if he can be much of a pass rusher. 
I mean, he probably, if he really wanted him to be, he probably could be one, but he's more of a run stuffer, you know. And that's what you need. Of course, you know, in that division, you got Shady McCoy, Jay Ajayi, you know, two very good running backs. And then you got Matt Forte, I guess. You know, but he's getting up there in age. But he's still decent, though. He's still good. But they need someone who can definitely stuff the run. And occasionally, maybe get after the pass rush. You know, get after the passer. You know? Okay, so that will do it for my uh, second first-round mock draft. I know I'm going to have a lot of hate for this. Well, he's too high. Or, why is he pick? Why are you picking him there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shut up. You know, this is just my second first-rounder. You know, the serious first round mocks won't be coming until a while from now. Like, during free agency. Like, when free agency is in full swing, I'd say around mid March, late March, early April, that's when the serious ones are going to come out. So, for right now, these are just having some fun, you know, whatever. You know, don't really take these too seriously, they're just fun. So I'll be coming out with uh, my next Browns mock most likely tomorrow. You know, I had, I, was, I had a somewhat busy day today. You know, personal life comes before YouTube, as always. But at least I got my first round mock out there for the people to see. So uh hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm Crazy Dog 99 Let's go Browns. Let's not mess this draft up. You know, we can't afford this. We need to have a great draft and a great free agency. You know, I don't know when the I don't know what the time period between for the Browns to make the playoffs would be. I'd say right now five years, but if we have a good draft, good free agency, I'd say at most three years. But we'll see. We'll see. So um, hope you guys like this video. I'm Crazy Dog 99, and I'm out.